So last week, Sam Altman, who is the CEO of OpenAI, of course, the company behind ChatGPT, he went on Lex Friedman's podcast and they had a really in-depth discussion about ChatGPT, about artificial intelligence, about the future of work, about a whole bunch of really interesting stuff. And in my opinion, Sam gave us three really, really huge hints in that interview about what artificial intelligence is going to look like over the next 18 months or potentially even less time than that. So my name is David White from Learn Marketing AI. I help business owners and digital marketers use artificial intelligence to get more leads and customers and sales. And I want to share with you those three points in the presentation where I my ears kind of pricked up and I thought, oh, that's a really, really big hint about what the future of artificial intelligence might look like. And if he's giving us that hint, that suggests what we can do to be one of the winners in the future. And I say that because, and if you've been a subscriber of this channel for any period of time, you know my belief here. I say that because my thinking is the business owners and digital marketers and probably all knowledge workers the ones who lean into artificial intelligence first are going to get so damn good at their jobs, which in our instance means turning strangers into customers. The ones who lean in first are going to get so good at that, so freakishly good at that, that no one is ever going to catch up. And we want to be those people who get so freakishly good at marketing that no one ever catches up to us. Now, this is kind of supported by an idea that's uh, or a quote from Peter Diamandis, who I love and respect very much, where he says, um, by the end of this decade, there are going to be two types of companies, those who fully adopted artificial intelligence and those who went completely bankrupt. So let's look now at these three clips, these three moments from the discussion with uh, with Lex Friedman, where Sam gave us some really big tips into uh, what the future of artificial intelligence might look like. Roll clip one. But for me, looking back, GPT-4, Chad GPT is pretty damn impressive, like historically impressive. So allow me uh, to ask what's been the most impressive capabilities of GPT-4 to you and GPT-4 Turbo? I think it kind of sucks. Hmm. Typical human also. Gotten it's, used to an awesome thing. No, I think it is an amazing thing. Um, but relative to where we need to get to and where I believe we will get to, uh, you know, at the time of like GPT-3, people were like, oh, this is amazing. This is this like marvel of technology. And it is. It was. Uh, but, you know, now we have GPT-4 and you look at GPT-3 and you're like, that's unimaginably horrible. Um, I expect that the delta between 5 and 4 will be the same as between 4 and 3. And I think it is our job to live a few years in the future and remember that the tools we have now are going to kind of suck looking backwards at them. And that's how we make sure the future is better. So that's interesting. Chat GPT-4 kind of sucks. And that makes me wonder, what is Sam specifically referring to when he says chat GPT-4 sucks? Is he saying chat GPT-4 sucks as an LLM? As in you ask it to write you a chapter of a book and it's like, meh. Or you ask it to write an email and it's not amazing at it or it hallucinates a little bit. Or is he saying that chat GPT as a tool is not as good as it could or should be. As an artificial intelligence tool, like letting go of the LLM, text-to-text -text type stuff, is that what he's suggesting? And that, in my opinion, and you'll see more proof of this in, uh, in just a moment, that, I think, is what he's referring to. So right now, ChatGPT has evolved somewhat. It started out purely as text-to-text, -text, and then it got a few plugins, and then we were able to build our own GPTs, and Dali was there along the way, their image generator, which of course started out crap. And Sam and Lex were chuckling throughout the interview saying like, oh, I remember when we all used to laugh about how bad Dally was at uh, making hands. And now it's like amazing. And the next thing that uh, probably is going to be added to ChatGPT will be Sora, which is OpenAI's absurdly accurate and like cinematic text to video tool. So that, that makes me think like Sam saying ChatGPT4 kind of sucks. It kind of sucks, which means that he can see a world where an artificial intelligence tool can do a lot more than text to text or text to image or even text to video. So that brings me to clip number two, roll clip two. The way I think about it is not what percent of jobs AI will do, but what percent of tasks will AI do and over what time horizon. So if you think of all of the like five second tasks in the economy, the five minute tasks, the five hour tasks, maybe even the five day tasks, how many of those can AI do? And... I think that's a way more interesting, impactful, important question than 
how many jobs AI can do because it is a tool that will work at increasing levels of sophistication and over longer and longer time horizons for more and more tasks and let people operate at a higher level of abstraction. So that's an interesting idea. We all know how to use ChatGPT for a five second task, like write me a tweet. We all know how to use ChatGPT for a five minute task, like give me some ideas of what social media content I could post this week or write a description for this YouTube video. We all know how to use ChatGPT for five hour tasks, like, hey, I'm hosting this kind of promotion, write me an email sequence for it. But what about a five day task? And an easy example that comes to me off the top of my head would be something like write a job description for this position that we're trying to fill, post it on LinkedIn, Seek, Indeed, wherever people post jobs, go through all the applications and pick out the top 10 that you think would be the best candidates for this job so we can interview them. Now that, that is a five day job. And you can see how that would be a lot harder for artificial intelligence to do than a five second job, like write me a tweet or whatever. Now, if artificial intelligence is going to get to that level, that means that it needs to have something called agency. So agentic artificial intelligence, in my opinion, from the last clip and the one before and the one that you're about to see, I think that's where open AI is going. And agentic artificial intelligence means it can actually do stuff. That means that when you write stuff to it, when you go text to artificial intelligence, it can give you text back. It can give you an image back with Dali. It can give you video back with Sora, but it can also go and do stuff like get the email that you wrote together, plug it into your CRM and send it out to your list at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Or it can go and set up a Zoom meeting and send out a calendar invite to whoever it might be. Or it can go and post a job on LinkedIn. Or it can go into your social media platforms and schedule out a month's worth of content. Or it can run your ads for you. Or it can set up split tests for your landing pages or your sales pages. It can build a new product inside your CRM and connect the shopping cart and all that's like, holy smokes, how interesting would that be if that's where we're going with artificial intelligence? Now, the third thing, the third clip that makes me think that this is where we're going. Let's roll the clip. Listen to this. Tell me what you think. Can you speak to what QSTAR is? We are not ready to talk about that. See, but an answer like that means there's something to talk about. It's very mysterious, Sam. I mean, we work on all kinds of research. Yeah. Uh, we have said for a while that we think better reasoning in these systems is an important direction that we'd like to pursue. We haven't cracked the code yet. We are not ready to talk about that yet. That's really interesting. But, and if I skip forward through a couple of minutes of our banter, this is what Sam said when Lex asked him, is this going to be like a quantum, quantum, is this going to be like a huge leap? Here's what he said. So, you know, part of the reason that we deploy the way we do is that we think, um, we call it iterative deployment. We, uh, rather than go build in secret until we got all the way to GPT-5, we decided to talk about GPT-1, 2, 3, and 4. And part of the reason there is I think AI and surprise don't go together. And also the world, people, institutions, whatever you want to call it, need time to adapt and think about these things. And I think one of the best things that OpenAI has done is this strategy and we, we get the world to pay attention to the progress, to take AGI seriously, to think about what systems and structures and governance we want in place before we're like under the gun and have to make a rest decision. I think that's really good. So if he's talking about artificial intelligence and surprise not going well, if you think back to what he said in the first the, the first clip that I showed you, where he said the delta between ChatGPT3 and ChatGPT4 is probably going to be the same as the delta between ChatGPT4, which we have now, and ChatGPT5, which we will have soon, ChatGPT5 is not going to be a surprise. QSTAR is something that they're not ready to talk about yet because artificial intelligence and surprise do not go together. So that, my friend, makes me think that OpenAI, right now they're working on artificial intelligence that has agency. I may be completely wrong. Really, no one knows what the hell is going on inside these companies, but uh, I think that brings up some very interesting thoughts. First and foremost, using artificial intelligence is a skill. There's a huge difference between going to AI and saying, write me a social media ad like your David Ogilvy and expecting something brilliant like, uh, heads up, David Ogilvy never wrote a social media ad. I think he was quoted as saying he hated social media. Uh, hmm. There's a huge difference between just like farting something into chat GPT and expecting it to be brilliant versus actually being a great operator with artificial intelligence. And if it is going to get so much cooler, 
by having agency. That means that the people who know how to use it best right now are the ones who are best positioned to take advantage of it and get them to do, get it to do those five hour, those five day jobs really, really well. And imagine, just think for a second how productive someone is going to be when they can get artificial intelligence with like 10, 15 minutes of prompting to do the job of a social media manager for an entire week. Imagine how effective they're going to be when they can get artificial intelligence to do the job of an email marketer and an advertiser and a content marketing specialist with like 15 minutes worth of prompting. That I think is where we're going. And that is a scary, scary thought. So my encouragement would be lean into learning artificial intelligence as best as you possibly can right now. This is what I try and teach people to do inside my AI marketing hub. I really do believe that people are going to get left behind very, very, very quickly. Like someone with artificial intelligence and the knowledge of how to use artificial intelligence to go and do social media stuff for that person could take six or 10 or 20 social media managers jobs, in my opinion, probably even more for a copywriter, like a copywriter with artificial intelligence, probably not too far off can take the, the place of 10 copywriters without artificial intelligence. So my friend, really lean into this. And there's one more idea. I'm not going to share this clip because it was a little bit convoluted. But there's one more idea that I want to share with you from uh, towards the end of this presentation or this interview with Lex, where they were talking about context windows and basically how much stuff an artificial intelligence tool like ChatGPT can remember. So right now, ChatGPT and Gemini, which I've spoken about on the channel previously, which you can check out up here, and um, also Claude as well, which I've spoken about on the channel up here too, they have pretty big context windows. So if you input a bunch of text to them, they can remember like 100,000 plus words, which is great. That means that you can give them like huge amounts of your copy for them to go and uh, to go and learn from. You can give them transcripts from YouTube videos for them to summarize. You could give them, let's say, 80% of the book that you've been writing on and get them to write the next chapter or what have you. But listen to this little, little kind of a quote here from Sam when they talk about how much stuff will artificial intelligence be able to remember in the future? So Sam says this, I think what people want, or at least what I want for myself, is a model that gets to know me and gets more useful to me over time. This is an early exploration. I think there's a lot of other things to do, but that's where we'd like to head. You'd like to use a model and over the course of your life, maybe it'd be many models, but over the course of your life, it gets better and better. It's not just what I want it to remember. I want it to integrate the lessons of my life and, and remind me in the future what to do differently or what to watch out for. We all gain from experience over the course of our lives in varying degrees. And I'd like my AI agent to gain with that experience too. So if we go back and let ourselves imagine that trillions of tr and trillions of tokens of context length, if I can put every conversation I've ever had with anybody in my life in there, inside ChatGPT. If I can have all my emails, all of my input output in the context window every single time I ask a question, that'd be pretty cool, I think. And I think that'd be cool as well. So I can see a world in the not too distant future where we have an app on our phone or our computer that's kind of like Siri. Maybe it's always listening to us. Maybe it's always learning. And when we do go ahead and ask ChatGPT, hey, can you please craft this year's Black Friday sale, it'll say, hey, remember that one that we did three years ago that really crushed? You haven't really returned to this particular aspect of doing that Black Friday sale. Why don't we run that out this year? Or you can maybe every single meeting that you have with your employees or every single course that you go through, ChatGPT's learning. And when you do something where you're forgetting maybe what was said a month ago or what you learned a year ago, ChatGPT says, hey, you actually should be going about it this way. Think about this. Remember that thing that we learned in the course or Remember that idea that that person brought up in that meeting nine months ago? What about that? So again, this goes back to using artificial intelligence like this is not going to be super easy. It's not going to be as intuitive as something like a Rubik's Cube. It's going to require some skill to use. So my encouragement to you would be really go and lean into artificial intelligence as much as you possibly can. Be one of these early adopters. And I think you will get so freakishly good at using AI to turn strangers into customers that no one's ever gonna catch up to you. So my name is David White. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, click that little subscribe button over here. Go and check out another video from the channel up here and I'll see you 
in the next video.